Hello everyone, Atheatos here. And yeah, here I am again with some AM5X86 CPUs. Now this video will have actually two parts. So first of all I'm gonna test my entire collection of these CPUs. And I have in total 14 pieces. But okay, 6 are the different variants here. So as my motherboard allows me to set both the voltage and the bus speed at any value, the idea here is to overclock all this on air and see the limits. So something like a binning process, with the final goal to gather some statistics and see if there is any difference between all these variants. Then on the second part of the video, just using some of these, I will try to push my motherboard to the limit and find what the maximum bus is here, and along with that the relevant bio settings. So let's now have a look at the different CPUs here. And yeah, basically all of these are internally more or less the same. So more or less only the printed text here on the top is different. Some are even marked as AM486. But yeah, internally all of these use the same 350 nanometer core with 16 kilobytes of level 1 CAS. So now the first two ones are also the most common. The AMD VEX 533ADW and ADZ. Then we have here this one with the marking DS9154-8. And then we go to the V16 CPUs. And first of all here, this AM486DX5 133V16. Yeah, this time the letters are laser etched. AMD probably just changed this at some point. Now all these four are exactly the same, but the final two have a small difference. These are the AM486DX4 and the AM486DX2, but these are not your regular DX2s and DX4s. These also have the marking 100V16 and 66V16. So yeah, these use the new core with 16 kilobytes of level 1 cast. Now in practice the only difference of these chips to the normal 5x86 chips is with a multiplier. On the 5x86 chips you have two multipliers available, the 3x and 4x, while here both of these chips can do 2x or 3x. And of course these are also the chips that in 2x mode I use to find the maximum bus speed for my motherboard. Now of course using my motherboard I can set the voltage and the bus speed at any setting. However, doing that for 14 CPUs, yeah, there are just too many combinations. And in the end I had to reduce a bit the search space. So I only tested two bus frequencies, one at 56 MHz and one at 60. These are very good options as they are very close to the limits of the CPUs. And for every option I just tested to find the minimum V core that can make this stable. For the cooler I used this Zalman one that I placed on top of the CPU and then I had a case fan blowing air from this side. So yeah okay air cooled but for sure something that was a bit of an overkill. Then here the bio settings are just my best settings for high bus speeds. These are exactly the same settings I used on my overclocking underclocking video. So I know that these are completely stable with a 64 MHz bus. Then for stability test I just made here a bat file which runs Doom High Details 5 times. Yeah, I have seen on my system with this CPUs that uh, if something is to break it's usually Doom. Now in practice I also run once Quake after that and then again this script. So overall I think we are okay here. Now one other interesting thing is the way that the system usually crashes in Doom. You see it doesn't actually crash but the guy just gets a bit lost here. Yeah, shooting the doors and stuff like that. And overall it was an interesting experience because I was easily able to see how each CPU was stabilizing more and more as I was increasing the voltage. And yeah, again I had a lot of fun. Now here we are with the table and all the results. And yeah, as I said, we have two measurements here, both with a 3x multiplier, the first one with a 56 MHz bus and a total of 168, and the second at 180 MHz with a 60 MHz bus. 14 CPUs in total, 4 ADWs, 3 ADZs, 3 DS91s, 133 V16, 
100 v16 and 266 v16. Then ok, here are the voltages that each CPU needs to achieve these speeds in a stable way. All the settings of course are from the 8 different settings that my motherboard can provide. And uh, yeah, here everything that is marked as 5 volts. It doesn't mean that I really try to run the CPU with 5 volts. It is just a marking that indicates that the CPU was not able to be stable no matter what the setting. So yeah, first of all here on the lower frequency only one CPU failed the test and that was a DS91. While on the higher frequencies six CPUs failed. Now let's see here a bit more in detail if I sort by this column. Including the one that failed, there are another two that actually needed more than 4 volts. One was a 66V model and then a 100V one. But then you have 8 pieces that uh, did this at the minimum setting, that in my motherboard is 366 volts. And we can see here that we have basically CPUs from all different markings. So yeah, nothing too significant to say here. Then again if I sort by the high frequency, the best one was a DS91 and the second one was this 66V16. Third one was an ADW and this ADW is also my best piece, the one I used on my overclocking video. Then we have one more, the 133V16, that is pretty close. But after that, uh, yeah, there are four more that I had to push the voltage to the limit to get any stability. Some ADZs, some ADWs, and finally six failed chips that are of all different types. So what can we say here? I mean, uh, the best and the worst one was of the same type, as well the second best and the third worst. So yeah, for sure, this confirms that the marking does not play any role here, and it is all in the silicon lottery. By the way, after all these measurements, I tried again the three top performers here, with the Peltier element at the 64 MHz bus, that is my record. For sure this one can do that, uh, it is on my video. Then uh, this one, the DX266, was also be able to run stable at this setting, but I had to push the voltage significantly higher, something like 4.12, while my previous chip was here. Now if you think about this, this is totally crazy because 192 divided by 66, it's yeah, 2.9. So a 290% overclock, something absolutely ridiculous. I don't think I have ever achieved something like that before. Now the other one uh, that was also the top performer here actually failed to run with a 64 MHz bus. And this one was also very interesting because okay at uh, 3.66 it was unstable. It was a little bit better with the two other settings. But then here it started uh, crashing on Doom and on 4 volts it wasn't even posting. So this piece here actually just does not like higher voltages. Yeah, things like that can happen. So that is all the discussion here. I have to note again that the DX2s and DX4s on the same frequency and same setting they performed exactly the same. And it is a matter of uh, what type of multipliers you want to play with. The 2x multiplier of the DX2s and DX4s may be a bit more useful also when you try to underclock. Now in my case I exploited uh, this 2x multiplier to try and push my motherboard to the limits and uh, then find the maximum possible bus here. Now ok, in the end I managed to get 70 MHz here and it was completely stable. However, ok, I had to do a lot of stuff to get this like that. And here ok, with the PCI clock and ETA clock devices I can verify this number. Both are spot on. And yeah, of course this is totally crazy again, as the PCI bus also works at full 70 MHz, again without any issues. Now up to 66 MHz bus, I was able to use the same BIOS settings as before, but after that I had to increase this from 2 to 3. Now unfortunately this comes with a drawback, as when this is set at 3, it is not possible to use anymore the right back setting for the level 2 CAS. And yeah, we are limited to the right root setting. That is best for Quake, but basically for nothing else. 
Now, okay, this could be a problem, but okay, I will experiment with more cast chips in the future, and I might be able to improve these timings here. And the final thing I had to do to be completely stable with a 70 MHz bus was of course to increase the voltage of the motherboard, the 5V rail. You can think of this as the VIO, and this had to be set above 5.4 volts. Now like that it was completely stable. Now unless I did that, aside from some freezes, the system had the tendency to corrupt the CMOS RAM. So yeah, this is the first thing that fails. And it was very annoying as every time I had to reset all these settings here. So time for some benches and tests. And here is the CPU tool. Yeah, 140 MHz, 2 times 70 AMD 486DX. Here is the system information tool. Okay, for some reason it thinks it's a Cyrix 486. And here is the benchmark results. Then check it. Real time clock check. And everything is okay here. Main system benchmark. 8486 at 140 MHz. And again these are the results. And finally here the video speeds. Interesting enough, all these numbers are actually lower here. Yeah, even with a higher bus speed, it's not enough to beat this higher CPU frequency. And VGA speed here also has the same opinion. And only bit speed here shows the difference. This goes around 25600. This is the floating point test, uh, CPR for DOS. Everything runs fine here. But again, this is significantly slower. Now here, ok, landmark, and both CPU and floating point unit are for sure lower, but again the video speed is higher, at around 28,000. Yeah, all that is as expected. And here speedsys, yeah, 486 DX2, 140MHz. The memory bandwidth here is higher, as well as the VESA memory speed, all this due to the higher bus, but in the detailed results here, Everything is actually lower. Well, okay, level 1 cast for sure, because this runs on the CPU frequency. But with those two, I don't really know why. Maybe because of the worst timings here. In combination that uh, before here with Spithys I use right back cast, and now I can only use the right through option. Now a final interesting thing here is that the hard disk speed is more or less the same. And yeah, this is probably the speed limit of the flash disco module I am using. And finally here the cast check tool, authentic AMD 486, clocked at 140 MHz. And again here is the performance of the RAM system, and it is lower than it was before. So finally time for some benchmarks. Ok, for sure we are not gonna break any records here. 140 MHz are just too low. So first of all here we have 94.2. Then Chris 3D Bench with uh, 64.6 PC Player Benchmark 23.4 yeah, I think it's interesting to give you all these numbers for reference Now Doom High Details This is 58.4 And finally Quake here with 16.1 frames per second So here we are Ok, this was a smaller one But quite interesting, right? First of all I proved that the marking here does not matter, it's all on the silicon lottery. Secondly, this DX2 overclocked up to 192 MHz, something that is also quite ridiculous. And the final and most interesting thing is that my motherboard can actually do 70 MHz bus, something that it might be useful if I ever try to beat the gold record. But ok, in order to do so I need to find a CPU that can handle 210 MHz. So 3 times 70 And I don't know, I mean even after 14 pieces The max I could do was 192 I don't know if I was extremely unlucky or maybe finding something that can do even 200 Is actually quite rare And at this point I'm not willing to try to break the world record Just by using luck and money However I have some other plans That you will see in the future So as usual you know what to do like, comment and subscribe so that you don't lose all that. I hope you like this one and yeah, see you again next time.